This is the Bahamas Tonight Northern Edition. This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all, I'm Megan Shepard. Thank you so much for tuning in. Topping news, over 50 Bahamians who were stuck in South Florida returned home this afternoon. They have been agitating and waiting for weeks, but it's finally happening. The national flag carrier departed the capital at 7.30 this morning for Fort Lauderdale. The airline returned around noon today with the first 83 Bahamians who were impacted by the border closure due to COVID-19. The second flight is expected to stop in Grand Bahama shortly and to connect on to New Providence at 4.45 this afternoon with the remaining stranded Bahamians, bringing home a total of 200. They include students, essential workers and other residents. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs releasing a statement this afternoon on the repatriation exercise. The statement notes that returnees will arrive in New Providence and Grand Bahama. The ministry realizes that Bahamians are eager to see their loved ones. However, all returning nationals and residents upon arrival will proceed immediately to the government's operated quarantine facility for evaluation. They will remain at the facility until health officials are able to determine if it is safe for them to leave. Members of the public are advised to refrain from visiting the airport to collect family members. In the interest of public safety, visitors will not be permitted at the quarantine facility. If family members wish to send packages to their loved ones while they are in quarantine, the items should be delivered to the Ministry of Health in New Providence and Grand Bahama, and they will be delivered to recipients at the quarantine facility. These protocols have been put in place in the interest of public health and safety and the officials ask that all persons comply fully with these measures. There will be law enforcement personnel at both the airports and the quarantine facilities to ensure there is no breach of these protocols. Today's flight is expected to be the first phase of the government's efforts to assist those Bahamians seeking to return home due to COVID-19. Minister of State for Grand Bahama, Senator Kwesi Thompson, addressing the issue. Today we, we begin that process of bringing back Grand Bahamians uh, from Florida. Uh, Grand Bahama is taking part in the exercise along with uh, New Providence. And so in total, uh, there are about 200 Bahamians who are coming back today. Out of that 200, uh, we have approximately 40 of those uh, persons are coming directly to Grand Bahama. Uh, they are Grand Bahama residents. So we are very pleased that today we begin that process of bringing back Bahamians uh, to Grand Bahama. Uh, they will arrive at the airport. Uh, they will be transported uh, from the airport uh, to the uh, facility. Uh, and then health officials will process those persons uh, at that facility. Uh, once uh, they have come off the plane, obviously they will go through uh, the process of customs, they'll go through the process of immigration, and then they will not be allowed to leave the airport. However, they will be transported uh, directly to the facility. Um, health will process them at the facility. Uh, those persons, in accordance to uh, the protocols that the Prime Minister has set up, uh, health will assess their uh, home situation and those persons that are able to self-quarantine uh, will be allowed to leave that facility and then they will be uh, under uh, self-quarantine but also under the supervision of uh, the medical professionals. Now the recommendation for a two-week lockdown for Bimini actually came from the Bimini's Member of Parliament a couple of days ago. Italia Hall spoke with the area MP who says she thinks a lockdown is needed. Bimini is now considered a hot spot as that Northern Ireland has the second highest number of COVID cases in the country. During the weekly press conference, health officials noted that they are giving consideration to a two-week lockdown. Member of Parliament for West Grand Bahama and Bimini, Pakisha Parker Edgecombe says it is welcomed news. In mind that many of the residents of Bimini would have called for this lockdown themselves, 
after we noticed that there were increases in the COVID-19 cases. Um, a lot of the concern also has been expressed as to exactly what are the measures that are going to be put in place to ensure that everyone is safe, even during this uh, two-week lockdown, if it was to come. Um, the reality is we have always had protocols in place in Bimini, um, but the fact is the, the cases are not decreasing. Uh, we don't want to see that they continue to increase, and the lockdown, in my opinion, is needed. But she says all Bimini residents must agree. Um, we can't just um, all of a sudden uh, spring it on them and expect persons to be ready. So for me going forward, if indeed that lockdown was to take place as we would have called for, um, we would need to make sure that the residents are given sufficient notice uh, to prepare themselves. Um, as the government, I am certain that we will do whatever we can to ensure that everyone is safe during that time and put measures in place that will make it easier for them. Um, at the end of the day, we want to ensure that these cases do not increase. And um, for us, I, I do believe that that lockdown is absolutely necessary. Um, and that's what we're moving towards. Now, health officials are expected to provide an update soon on the way forward for Bimini. Italia Hall, ZNS Network News. Is the church under attack? While well, phase 1B of the government's plan in the emergency orders to reopen the country gives consent to businesses that are able to provide delivery or curbside service to resume operations. Tonight, the president of the Grand Bahama Christian Council is expressing his view on the government's plan. Romiko Knowles has more. Some President of the Grand Bahama Christian Council, Pastor Robert Lockhart, says as citizens of the country, they do have the right to express their disagreement in the government's decision, but it must be done in a cooperative way. In addition, he says that if the government decides not to open churches until the end of May, they must submit. So the church has the right, as any other group, uh, we're, we're church, but we're also Bahamian citizens, that if we don't agree with the way that the government is doing something, we have the right to express that. But at the same time, we don't express that in a disrespectful way, a rebellious way. We're still committed to working along with the government um, and, 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 and to be able to say to the government, hey, if, you're gonna, if we disagree with what you're doing, then give us some better understanding of why you're doing what you're doing. But that must be done out of a spirit of respect because the government is called to govern the country and to lead the country, and we cannot usurp their authority. We've got to submit to the government and to leadership. Recently, a prophecy went viral on social media giving the government of the Bahamas seven days to rethink its decision regarding the opening of the church doors. Or, and I quote, the hand of God will be against your government. As a pastor, I need to be accountable to somebody that if I do something crazy in the church or I decide to steal the church money or I decide to sleep around the women in the church or I decide to start preaching stuff that's not in the Bible, that there is a group of people that say, now, pastor, you know, you need to get yourself together or, or we're going to have to, we'll move you from me in the past of the church. It brings accountability. Because if that accountability is not in the place, then I can do any foolishness that takes place. There's no one to discipline me, correct me, punish me if I don't repent or submit. And I think every leader needs that type of accountability because we're human beings, we're not perfect. Pastor Lockhart says that he does not agree with the prophecy and notes that spiritual leaders must be held accountable to other spiritual leaders. He says the principle is that no one is always right. For the church, our main day of functioning when it comes to gathering is Saturdays for our Seventh-day Adventists, brothers and sisters, and then on Sundays um, for other churches. So uh, for the majority of the Christian community, if not all, our main day of gathering is Saturday and Sunday. But of course, they're the two main days of lockdown. And so uh, whereas... Uh, businesses and other groupings are allowed to gather at least from Mondays to Saturdays once they maintain the proper protocols. Uh, I think what the church is saying, our main days are Saturdays and Sundays, and we feel that if we're able to follow, if, that we are able to follow the same protocols that we are, be allowed to gather also. So I think that's the main argument um, um, of the church. Many are of the belief that one of the reasons pastors are so adamant about churches reopening is because they're in need of tithes. Lock 
Lockhart says the issue is not that the church is not willing to wait until the government allows the doors to reopen. He says in the same way other businesses were allowed to resume operations under Phase 1B of the emergency orders, they too can maintain similar protocols during lockdown periods, which are Saturday and Sundays. We realize that we have a role to play in this, and so I think three things. I believe in the power of God, the wisdom of God, and the love of God. So I believe the power of God is available to heal and to deliver from the COVID virus, but I also believe as human beings and us having human responsibility at play, we need to exercise wisdom. Jesus came and healed lepers, but still that didn't cancel the fact that lepers had to be quarantined. So the, the thing is, is, I don't think there's one over the other. I don't think um, we have to choose the power of God over human responsibility and exercising good wisdom. So I think medicine is a gift from God. I believe doctors are a gift from God. I believe that healing is a gift from God. I believe wisdom is a gift from God. Government is a gift from God. And the word is a gift from God. So I think it's all these things working together. As it relates to the pandemic, Lockhart says the church's approach is always to pray. Romiko Knowles, ZNS Network News. It appears as if the wine and spirits industry is doing well during this COVID-19 pandemic in the country. Over the last two weeks or so, the economy has been opening up slowly, and now most businesses can provide curbside pickup and delivery services. While well, our Italia Hall visited a local distributor that's been a part of the Grand Bahama community for many years to find out how business there has been going. Grand Central Liquors has some three locations on Grand Bahama and their doors have been closed since the emergency orders were put in place. General Manager Chris Williams says it was a challenging time, especially for his employees. I went out to them, I did my best to try and see if I could assist them during the seven weeks that they were off, you know, the bin, but it's been challenging, it's, you know, considering that there was no income coming in. He says he was excited when he first heard the announcement that businesses will be able to provide curbside pickup and delivery services. Of course, we couldn't just jump right into it because we weren't quite prepared. You know, m many uh, of our competitors may have had some inside information about what was coming, you know what I mean? So we had to take some time to prepare for it, so that's we didn't open right away. But it's been challenging, but now we've been able to iron out a lot of the roughness, the rough edges, and now it's pretty much smooth sailing. You know, I, I have to say hats off to our team because basically they did an amazing job uh, in such a new environment, learning how to operate in such a short time. And as for what business was like on opening day? We basically opened all three of our stores on day one, our Sergeant Major location as well as our 8 Mile location. It was a bit chaotic to begin with because we had to get the customers to adapt to, to the way of curbside you know this is a new procedure a new protocol for our customers so they weren't used to it but pretty much they're now grasping to the new idea he says in their downtown location alone they have served over 400 customers he says persons are able to whatsapp or call in their order that will be brought to their vehicles the easiest way thus far is just driving up as if you would at any fast food restaurant placing your order and pick up and the the wait is pretty much less than 10 minutes. The business owner says he is positive about the future. If this is going to be the, be the new way of life, you just have to learn to adapt to it. But I'm pretty much, I can't wait to get back to some sense of normalcy. But I mean, if this is the new norm, I'll accept it as well. Italia Hall, ZNS Network News. In news from the crime beat, five men are in police custody after reports of gunshots being fired. Reports are that on Thursday, May 7th, shortly after 6 p.m., police were alerted of gunshots being fired in the Sunridge Road area. Officers quickly responded where two males reported that they were fired upon by persons driving a Chevy Cavalier vehicle who are known to them. A short time later, officers arrested five males who are assisting police with their investigation into this matter. A Grand Bahamian man arraigned before the magistrate's court this morning. 40-year-old Steve Charles of Lewis Yard, wearing the green shirt, was arraigned before Deputy Chief Magistrate Debbie Ferguson in Magistrate Court No. 1. He pled not guilty to the charges. He was remanded to the Bahamas Department of Correctional Services and Dell Trial, which is set for September 2, 2020. This is in connection to a complaint made by owners of Freedom Lounge in the International Bazaar, where a number of grocery items were stolen, totaling some $3,095. The incident occurred between the 24th through 27th of March. 
Hello and God bless you. This is Pastor Naphtali Cooper from the Lord's house, bringing you a word of encouragement from Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. It's easy to rejoice when everything is going great, but Habakkuk is painting a very different picture here. In fact, it's pretty dark. He said there are no figs on the tree, no grapes on the vine, the olive crop has failed. There's no food in the field, no sheep in the pen, or cattle in the stall. That's a pretty bleak scenario, isn't it? But the question is, how do you focus on and praise God in times of disappointment or difficulty? Perhaps you're not dealing with failed crops today, but an empty bank account. Maybe you're dealing with other areas of your life that are, are unfruitful, where harvest has failed to occur. God wants you to turn that situation around. You may be looking at your situation and wondering how, but God's word shows us exactly how to do it. First, we must realize that the tests and trials of life come to every single one of us. At some time or another, difficult times are going to come. Jesus himself said, in the world ye should have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. When nothing seems to be going right and things don't seem to be improving and maybe things are downright bleak right now, that is not the time to stop praising God, to stop being of good cheer. Abaka said, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. We're living in a day of a fluctuating economy, corporate mergers and takeovers, political upheaval and constant threats of terrorism and war. Yet in the midst of it all, God does not change and his word does not change. God will take care of you. When you encounter troubles and tests and trials, remember this, you're just passing through. In other words, don't pitch your camp on the problems. Just keep on walking, rejoicing in the God of your salvation. If the prophet Abaka was here today, he might say to you in more modern language, look, it's been a bad year. You lost your job and food has been scarce. You might lose everything and your future still looks uncertain. But this is not the end for you. God hasn't changed and he wants to see you through. So rejoice in him. Rejoice now. Rejoice forevermore in the God of your salvation. God bless you. Coming up, the Grand Bahama Red Cross Center marking a special observance. That story up next. 